Hi, welcome to our first video, which is on section 2.1, linear equations in one variable. Um, please take notice that at any point in time, you may pause this video and take your time to write anything down. I'm just going to keep on moving in hopes that you will do that. Because um, I really want to try to keep these videos as short as I possibly can. Throughout the video, there will be some try some on your own questions. So please make sure that you take the time to pen and paper, work them out, and then submit your answers, and then check to see if you did it right. If you did not do it right, if you could take a picture of your work and then just shoot it to me in the Remind app, that would be amazing because then I could see where you're going wrong and help you correct those mistakes. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So section 2.1 has to deal with linear equations in one variable. This is a pretty easy section because you've been solving linear equations in one variable since Algebra 1, so hopefully you are experts in it. We are in advanced algebra, so we will be upping our game in the way that we display our answers, so that might be something that's a little new to you. So let's go ahead and get started with some vocabulary. Linear equations of one variable, what are they? Well, they're an equation that's going to have just one variable, and that one variable needs to have an exponent of 1, because if it had an exponent of 2, or an exponent of three, then it would be something different, like a quadratic or a cubic equation. So we needed to have an exponent of one. When you go and get your answer of a linear equation of one variable, you're gonna have a solution set. And the solution set is a number or a group of numbers that make a statement true. In this case, it's most likely just going to be one number, unless we have a few specific scenarios where it could be a group of numbers. A conditional equation is an equation that has a solution set of just one element. And all the problems that we're going to do in the beginning of this lesson are going to be condi conditional equations because they're just going to have one answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and start solving. Let's get some, let's do some math. Okay, so starting out here, we have 4x minus 2x minus 5 equals 4 plus 6x plus 3. And if you need a moment to pause the video and jot this down, please feel free to do so. I'm going to keep going because I love to do math. First thing I'm going to do is combine my like terms. On the left-hand side, I have two x terms. So I'm going to combine them. 4x minus 2x combined together to make 2x's. Bring down my minus 5. On the other side, 4 and a 3, so my constant terms, are going to combine to make 7. Bring down the plus 6x. Now, me personally, I like to deal with um, positive variable terms, so I'm going to move my smaller variable term over to the right side by subtracting it. So minus 2x minus 2x gets you negative 5 equals 7 plus 4x. Subtract your 7 over. Gets you negative 12 is equal to 4x. Dividing by 4 gets you an answer of negative 3. Now, back in Algebra 2 and all your other classes, you would just circle that and say, where's my answer? I am done. But what I want you to do is I want you to present your solution as a solution set. And what that looks like is you're going to do these really fancy curly braces. I'm sure they have an actual official name, but I'm just going to call it curly braces. And then you just put your answer, which is the element, that makes your equation true. Now let's quickly check to make sure that is true. So if I plug that back in, four times negative three is negative 12, negative two times negative three is positive six, minus five, that gets me negative six minus five, so negative 11. Over here, four plus six times negative three is negative 18, plus three, seven plus negative 18 is negative 11, yeah left and the right get the same, so I know that I did it right. All right, now you're going to try one on your own. Did you get an answer of two? Hopefully you did. If you didn't, go back and recheck your work. Next example. Now we're going to get into parentheses and needing to use the distributive property. So here we're going to distribute our two. So I get 2k minus 10 plus 3k is equal to k plus 6. Be very careful with your distributive property. Make sure you distribute it all the way through correctly. Combining like terms on the left gets us 5k minus 10 equals k plus 6. 
I'm going to move my smaller k, which is on the right, by subtracting it. 4k minus 10 is equal to 6. Next move would be to add your 10, which would get you 4k equals 16. Dividing gets you 4. So again, make it fancy. Advance your algebra. It would be the solution set of 4. Again, check your work to make sure that it actually is the element or the number that makes it true. If I plug in a 4 here, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. If I plug in a 4 here, I get 12. Negative 2 plus 12 is 10. Do I get 4 plus 6 is 10? Yes, I do. So I know I did it right. Check your work. I don't know why students don't do it. Then you know that you did it right and you'll get 100%. So do it. Just do it. Okay, try this one. See if you can do it. Did you get an answer of four? If not, go back and recheck your work. If you can't figure out what you did, send a picture to me in the Remind app. All right, let's make this one a bit more elaborate. Are we ready? I've got lots of distribution happening here. I've got two sets of parentheses. I've got lots of elements that need to be combined. And of course, now my iPad is delaying. There we go. Come back. Okay, so let's make sure that we distribute everything correctly. So distribution first. Negative 5 to my m is negative 5m. Negative 5 to my negative 1 is a positive 5. Did I do that right? Yes. Okay, bring down the rest. 6 plus negative 3m. I'm going to make that left side look nicer by combining my like terms. I get negative 8, right? m plus 5 and 6 makes 11. Perfect. All right, now let's go to the other side and make sure we distribute correctly here. Negative 2m plus 4. Did I distribute correctly? Yes. Bring down the rest of the problem. Plus 5. Combine like terms. So negative 7m plus, looks like 9. Smallest m term actually is on the left there with the negative 8. So I'm going to add that one over, so I'm dealing with a positive variable term. 11 equals 1m plus 9. Subtracting 9 from both sides gets us an answer of 2. I'll put that in my fancy braces, but I'm also going to check. This is going to be a little bit longer of a check. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 6. That's 0, so that goes away. All right, ignore that. Over here, 2 minus 1 is 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Okay, so now I'm hoping that my right side gets me negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, so that's a wash. Is negative 10 plus 5 negative 5? Yes, it is. Good. So I know I did it right. And again, I apologize for my handwriting. I'm writing on my iPad with my fingertips. Um, so, yeah. All right, try this one on your own. Hopefully you got an answer of negative 6 over 11, which is a good point. You will be getting lots of fraction answers in this course. Keep your answers as fractions. I prefer fractions over decimals, just because decimals sometimes you need to round. So a fraction will always give you an exact answer. So fraction it up, unless the problem has decimals in the actual problem. Then you can give decimals. All right, so now let's move on to our special situations. We have what's called a contradiction that could possibly occur when you're solving an equation. So a contradiction is an equation that has no solutions. So the solution set is none, nothing, nada, not there. So let's look at what happens when that is the case. So if I were to solve this equation and do my distribution, I would get 5x minus 15 is equal to 5x minus 15. Hmm. So now we get negative 15 is equal to negative 15. Is that true or false? You know what? I feel like this is wrong. This shouldn't, because that's not a contradiction. Let's change this problem, because I don't really, feel, I don't feel like recording this all over again. Let's change this three 
Change that up. Let's change that 3 to a 2. Make that a minus 10. So now we end up with, because if I subtract 5x from both sides, they go away. Now we're left with negative 15 equals negative 10. That's a contradiction, right? The other one was not a contradiction, so I don't know why I had that there. So we have negative 15 is equal to negative 10. That is false, not true. So that means there is not a single number that I can come up with that would make that be a true solution. So my answer is going to be that there is no solution. We do not put no solution in curly braces. If you do, I won't take points off, but no solution is not a solution. So we wouldn't put it in a solution set because a solution set is only there to show what elements are in the set. That's the solution. All right, I know, that was way out of all over the place. So no solution, that's our symbol, or you can either write the words no solution. The book is asking you to identify that it is a contradiction. So I'm just going to say that is a contradiction. And call it good. Okay. All right. So if it's not a contradiction, let's go through this one. It could be an identity. An identity is an equation that has infinite solutions. The solution set would be all real numbers, which is what our last one really should have been. Okay. So let's look at one and hope that this one is true. Okay. So distributing correctly, we get negative 7 negative 28x minus 2x, cleaning that up would get us negative 7 minus 30x. Over to the other side, I have 2 minus 30x, bring down my plus and my negative 9. Cleaning that up would leave us with negative 30x minus 7. So notice it is exactly the same. So if I move my 30x over by adding it, it would make them go away. And I'm left with negative 7 equals negative 7, which is true. So because it is true, that makes it an identity. Identity. And here, my solution set is all real numbers. So now I actually do have solutions. It's every single number is a solution. You can either write out the words or remember your symbol for all real numbers is that double barred R. Um, so you can do that too. Okay. All right. So we've got contradictions. We've got identities. Contradictions, there are no solutions. Identities, it's every single possible number that you can think of. So all the real numbers. Um, are your different scenarios. So it's either going to be a conditional equation, which means it has one answer, like we did in the first part, or it's going to be a contradiction, which means there's no solutions, or it's going to be an identity, which means it has all the real solutions. Okay. All right. So now we're going to up our game a little bit here. I'm going to not have you do that one. We're going to throw in some fractions, and we're going to throw in some decimals, and we're going to work through those problems. So this is an easy fraction problem. We have one third x plus two thirds x equals seven. Me personally, I would like to get rid of my fractions. And by doing that, I want to multiply the whole entire equation by a number that would eliminate those fractions. So by the least common denominator, which in this case, since they're both three, I'm going to multiply everything by three. Three times a third is one, so I get one x. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So pretty much you're just left with the numerator. But then don't forget to multiply the other side by 3, which gets you 21. Now that's a much easier equation to solve, which gets you 3x equals 21. x is equal to 7. Make it fancy. And that one would have been a little bit easier because the 1 third plus 2 thirds is 3 thirds, which is 1x, so then you will get to the 1x equals 7. But maybe it won't be as nice. What if I change that second denominator to a 7? So I need to think about what can I multiply both 3 and 7 by to eliminate that? Well, the least common denominator is going to be 21. And how I got that, I just multiplied 3 times 7. 
So I'm going to multiply everything by 21. So when I multiply it here, 21 times 1 is 21, divided by 3 is 7, bring the x along. Over here, 21 times 2 is 42, divided by 7 is 6. Or another way to think about it, 21 divided by th 7 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. But then don't forget over here, 21 times 7 is 147. So combining your like terms gets you 13x equals 147. Dividing that out using my calculator gets us 147 thirteenths. as your answer there. Okay, make it fancy. So fractions. Fractions are your friends, hopefully. Um, will be your friends, I don't know. Maybe they won't be your friends. Okay, moving on, let's do another one. So here are my denominators. I have a six and a two. So I would multiply everything by, go ahead and put in your guess. You said 12. You are correct. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12. Actually, I guess I could multiply everything by 6, too. That would be even smaller. Either would work. If I multiplied everything by 6, that would just give me smaller numbers. Um, but multiplying by everything by 12 would also work. You would just have more bigger numbers to work with. I'm going to do 6 just because I thought about it. So 6 divided by 6 would cancel, so I'm just left with the numerator of x plus 7. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then I'm going to distribute that 3 to everything in my numerator there. 6 to the negative 4 gets you negative 24. If you were to do the 12, then you would end up with 2 times x plus 7 plus 6 times 2x plus minus eight is equal to 12 times negative four, which is negative 48. So again, you just would have larger numbers, but you would get there. It's the correct answer the same way. Okay, so distributing gets you x plus seven equals six x minus 24 is equal to negative 24. Combining like terms gets you seven x minus 17 equals negative 24. There's probably going to be some announcements going off here shortly, so just please ignore them. Adding your 17 over gets you negative 7. So x is equal to negative 1. Negative 1 is our answer. Again, we should always be checking that. Negative 1 plus 7 is 6. 6 over 6 is 1. Negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. Over 2 is negative 5, which gets us negative 4. So we know we did it right. Perfect. All right, try this one on your own. Hopefully you got an answer of negative 1. Moving on to our last portion, which is our decimals. Um, so you guys do have calculators. So if you just want to deal with the decimals, feel free to just deal with the decimals. Me personally, I'll try to get rid of the decimals. So I noticed that all my decimals here have two decimal places. So if I were to multiply this whole entire thing by 100, because 100 has two zeros, it would technically move my decimal places over two places. Only would move the decimal places. It wouldn't move decimal places on the 15 or would not move decimal places on the 15 here, only on the decimals which would give me 6x plus 9, because this is the commutative property of multiplication right here, so it would only apply to the 1, 7 times 15. That looks a lot nicer to solve than the original. So distributing that gets us 6x plus 135 minus 9x equals 7 times 15, which is 105. 6 minus 9 is negative 3x, plus 135 is equal to 105. 105 minus 135 is negative 30. Dividing it gets us 10. Make it fancy. I'm going to trust my work that I am correct and go with it.
All right, last one. Here we have two decimal places again, so I easily can just move all my decimal places over, which would give me 2 times 50 plus 8R equals 4 times 50 plus R. So now you would get 100 plus 8R equals 4 times 50 is 200 plus 4R. Subtracting the 4R from both sides gets you 100 plus 4R equals 200. Subtracting 100 gets you 100. Divided by 2 gets you 25. So 25 is our answer. Voila. If, let's just pretend for fun, that this was 0.4 instead of 0.04, and I moved my two decimal places, that would turn this into 40 instead of 4 like we had in the original problem. Okay, so just kind of be aware of that. If all your decimal places are not the same, then you will have to possibly add zeros so that you can move your decimal place over as many spots as you need. Okay, that concludes our...